What was your first encounter with utter bullshit during your childhood? When our teacher would yell at us if we asked to go to the bathroom at the beginning of class. Because we should have gone earlier. And then yell at us if we asked to go into the middle of class because we were interrupting. And then yell at us if we wanted to go at the end because we were trying to ditch since the class was almost over. When I was in third grade one got suspended for being beat up on the playground. They had a zero tolerance for violence policy. Also I never took a swing. Just punished for being bullied. My mom, you don't lie to others. Quote. Also my mom, getting caught red-handed while telling a lie and I had to call her out on it. Who threw that paper plane at the teacher? No one is confessing. All right then. Everyone is punished. My mom finding a cigarette in the backyard. Accusing me of having stolen a friend's mom's cigarettes to secretly smoke there and grounding me. For it despite me not having done any such thing. I was like nine at that time. The first time I was followed by a couple of guys in a car. I was 12. I ran to the nearest house for help. And I asked them if we should call the police. And they said no. Looking back, I think they were wrong. Getting called out for throwing a snowball against a wall. Had to write down the whole school rules and there was not a single word about snow or throwing stuff. My mom would ask my opinion on things constantly. I would say it didn't matter to me, or whatever she thought was best. But she would force the issue until I finally answered. Then she would scream at me about how I didn't understand or I was an idiot or I never thought of her needs. I still panic a little when people ask for my opinion on something. Dad tax. I have done chores for you all week. I have received payment from you in the form of allowance for doing said chores. I have used that allowance to buy candy per your request because if you want something you pay for it yourself. And now you come in the room yelling dad tax and steal half of it. That is some bullshit. I was bullied a lot in elementary school. To be fair, I was a pretty easy target for the bullying. Our roast me would have a meltdown not knowing where to start. So every day at lunch and recess I would get chased and harassed by four other boys. One day the teacher assigned to keep order on the playground grabbed me and told me to quit running. But of course, as soon as I did the four boys began pushing and taunting me. So I started running again. Next thing I know the teacher grabs me by the arm and starts to paddle me. Teachers could do that back then. She missed my ass and caught me in the back again. So I cussed at her. She sent me to the principal's office. And when I told him what had happened he just a shook his head. Then had me stand up to take three licks from his paddle. Fifth grade is when I learned the world was utter bullshit. When I was in kindergarten we had to that thing where you had a grid of boxes. And in each box was a word. You would have to cut out each box individually. Then arrange the words in some order. After a few months of cutting out each box like we had been shown, I figured that cutting out the rows and putting them on top of each other so the boxes lined up and cutting them out like that would take a lot less time. My teacher saw me do this. I had to stay in at recess to cut them out the right way. Eating dog food because my mother used the child's support for cigarettes. Not the first but one that sticks out strongly in my mind. Me laying in a hospital bed after an overdose when I was 13. And my mother and father were standing on opposite sides of the bed screaming and yelling at each other over me. I recall making eye contact with a nurse for a notable length of time. My cousins often stole money and broke things and didn't say anything so they wouldn't get in trouble. I remember one particular time my aunt kept asking me if I broke it. I don't even remember what it was. Some kind of piece in container. Over and over even though I always told the adults if I broke something or made a mistake. I still got blamed and I think it's just because she just wanted it to be my fault for once instead. Of my cousins. Edit I remembered another one. So when I was little back in my home country I used to save up dollars. Once in a while someone would give me a dollar bill and I'd stash it away. 
I had six dollars dollars saved over my ten years and when I was leaving with my stepdad to come to the U.S. My aunt decided that I had to give up those dollars because my cousin did some stupid shit and they had to bail him out again so they needed all the money they could get. She also pressured me to give up my gold earrings and a ring I had. Presents I got a while back. Because again, since I was going to the US I didn't need them. I was forced to give up even the little favorite toys I had when I left but I stuck to it and kept my little ring and necklace. And got a lecture and shamed for it. We're not rich in the US. By the way, I work my ass off and so do my parents and we all always have. My cousins just never saved anything and always did stupid shit and still haven't changed. Only one is slightly better because he got lucky with a wife who's smart. Realizing how people reproduce. Learning that you can start a sentence with and. Despite. You know. Me being fed that information since year three. Person tells me that stealing is bad. Person proceeds to dig up my pigger bank. Also. Happy cake day up. Cupcake. My mom gave birth to my half-brother when I was about three. I remember being home with her right after she came from the hospital when three-year-old me asked. Mom, do we have to keep him? And that's when I realized life sure as shit ain't all about you. At least I got that lesson real. Real early. First grade. Teacher tells the class to complete the worksheet and there is to be no talking. We all start on the worksheet. And a boy behind me starts talking to me about something. I turn and tell him to stop talking. Teacher called me out and made me go to the front and turn my card from green to yellow. Red is the next warning and means you're going to the principal's office. I was so distraught. I'd never gotten in trouble before. I stood under the slide the entire recess crying and then cried off and on the whole rest of the day silently. I just knew my parents were going to be so disappointed and would of course know before I got home. When I got home and they didn't know I'd had to turn my card. I told them. They asked me why I was talking and I told them the story. Mom said, well, he shouldn't have been talking but let the teacher deal with him. You shouldn't. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. I was aghast. What? It isn't? I can still go back to school? It won't be on my permanent record. My life isn't over and I won't be labeled a bad kid forever. I felt like I got my second chance at life. Being told I could not use the restroom in class. I was not a cut up and really had to go. It was dehumanizing. Was asked to watch the rectory on Friday night so the priests could have a night off. I was 12 years old. My job basically was to accept food that was brought by parish owners for the priests and find a place for it in their jammed packed double glass door refrigerator that was as wide as two refrigerators. There were four priests at our tiny parish. I accepted fully cooked roasts, hams, casseroles and cakes. I was told not to eat anything. A few months later I was made to clean the convent with a couple of the nuns as a punishment for talking too much in class. There were 23 nuns who lived on site and taught school. Their kitchen had a tiny refrigerator and when it was lunchtime they opened a cupboard of expired canned goods. We had very old tomato soup for lunch with stale bread and milk made from powder. I asked them if they knew about the food over at the rectory and they said no. Going through my parents' cabinets for no reason and finding receipts from things I recently got from Santa on Christmas. An emotional and verbally abusive sister. Fuck off, Sarah. Definitely not the first. But it's an early one that I really remembered. Dad bought a fully EU pallet of assorted M3, M4, M6 screws, nuts and washers directly from a factory. All unsorted because apparently that was marginally cheaper than buying it sorted in boxes like a normal person. Me and my brother were forced to sort all of IT properly in Tupperware. I was like 4 to 5. That was fucking bullshit. Also, guess who did jack fucking shit in helping sort it? In first grade getting my yellow card flipped to red while I was in the bathroom. 
The teacher flipped everyone in the class one card while I was away because I guess she had it with us. Fuck you, Ms. Smith. I saved my money to buy a pair of x-ray specs from the back of a comic book. They didn't work for shit. I was around 7 to 8. It was sports day in my school and I participated in Pass the Baton. I was enjoying myself and trying my hardest. But at the end of it my class teacher told my mom, in front of me, that I was too slow. Not sure why I took it to heart but I just felt disappointed and it made me lose confidence in sports. I saw an electric green fire truck. A fire truck has to be fire engine red. They have their own color. Someone screwed up big time. I'm answering for my one five-year-old. Mom decided she was done breastfeeding. The child has made it very clear how utter bullshit this is to her. Her glare is quite telling. When we were 17 a friend of mine was the biggest bullshitter. I've known him since we were 8 years old. He told me he had a twin brother who died when he was 14. I don't know what went through his head LMAO. When I was about 7 or 8 years old we took a field trip to the Field Museum here in Chicago. During our lunch break and I wandered off to the gift shop to see what they had. I had a huge crush on this girl named Victoria in my class and I saw this ladybug ring for a couple of dollars. I knew she liked ladybugs and I had money my parents gave me to buy something at the shop. So I decided to buy the ring and give it to her. I was really nervous and kept waiting for the right time to do it. I eventually decided to just go for it and walked up to her near the end of the trip. She was with some of her friends which made me more nervous. But I found the courage to do it. She looked at the ring and laughed. Her friends joined her and she then tossed the ring in the trash. I was completely devastated and tried hard to hold back my tears. Even though I'm over it now. That completely fucked my confidence with girls for a long time. Looking back, I may have embarrassed her to giving it to her in front of her friends. Which is why she reacted that way. But even still it was pretty bullshit for her to just toss it in the trash in front of me like that. Back in elementary school I was somewhat misbehaved. And let me tell you that annoying a bunch of power tripping elementary school administrators will get you a lot of bullshit. I was sent to the principal's office for knocking over a cone during gym class. I was sent to a guidance counselor basically used the same way as the principal's office, for tearing a piece of paper. Not me specific, but there were lists posted on the wall of the school dictating which recess games kids in each grade could play. Octopus tag, for example, might only be allowed in second and third grade. If you wanted to play a game that was not on the list, you were required to talk to the principal. How one would arrange such a meeting was never really clear. I was scolded for playing pretend Star Wars during recess because it encouraged violence. I was asked if I needed a chew toy to help me concentrate. I wasn't focusing on classwork because I found it too easy. We were doing the hokey pokey and Julia didn't turn herself all the way around. What's the point in even trying? Trining yourself around is what it's all about. I went to a private school where I was bullied a lot. No one in admin did much when my friends and I reported it. Occasionally a lecture from the AP for the entire class with no specifics are calling out. In 5th or 6th grade, one of my bullies kept pinching my ass in line for P.E. Didn't read into that at the time. Until I finally turned around and screamed at him to knock it the fuck off. I got detention and was forced to apologize expressionless. Santa had a budget. A preacher at a local church gave regular sermons on the evils of alcohol. Then, when I was about nine, I learned that this minister had been arrested for drunk driving. As a repeat DUI offender, he lost his driver's license. When my family took me to the countryside and then saw a bull, my mom informs everyone dinner is ready by yelling from the bottom of the stairs and expects me to hear. Her despite my room being on the other side of the house. My door being closed, and my TV being on. Also my mom, don't yell from the top of the stairs. 
You need to ask me in person or else I can't hear you. I'm not made of ear you know. Catholic school. I lived in a communist country in Central Europe. When I was six years old, I played with some newspaper. There were photos of politicians and I drew on their faces. Making horns etc. Just making fun of them. When my father saw the newspaper, he said, we can get arrested for that. I was wondering, I am just a child and I am playing here. Making fun, how come this could lead to arrest? Thank God the country is not communistic anymore. Before me and my family were stable and had our own home we lived with our Aunt Betty. My Aunt Betty was a nice lady and all but she claimed to have visions from God so that made me worry even when I was eight. One night while I was sleeping my sister put in a movie called Carrie and my Aunt Betty turned on the TV to see the menu select screen and assumed with no evidence it was me. She told my mom to punish me and seeing as we didn't have anywhere else to go I ended up getting woke and up with an ass whooping. On a different occasion I was taking a nap outside on a couch swing and my Aunt Betty flipped out of nowhere saying that I pinned my sister down and licked dry. My sister was inside watching TV in the living room at that time so she was at the opposite end of the house. Even with actual evidence that I didn't do anything I still got whooped and grounded because she had complete control. That's not all the bull I had to go through while living with Aunt Betty but that's all the stuff that didn't happen in church.